Since its release back in 2001, Microsoft's flagship console has had its fair share of controller designs. And with the Xbox Series X release right around the corner, here's a look back at the history and evolution of the Xbox controller. The original Xbox controller, commonly referred to as the Duke, made its way to consumers' hands in November 2001. While the original Xbox console was overall a success for Microsoft's first step into the gaming console market, most people were not exactly fans of the controller's design at launch. The overall build of the controller was huge to say the least, and with a console that was a monster in its own right, housing the entire system or even worse, travelling with it, was a constant chore. The Duke was almost the same size as some handheld systems at the time, and also exhibited some rather strange design details, like an unnecessarily large centre logo and oval-shaped buttons. It is worth noting, however, that the controller did help pioneer the indented analogue sticks, along with more ergonomic left and right triggers, making shooters more enjoyable. After gripes about the excessive weight and size of the original Xbox controller, Microsoft dialed it down a bit with its second iteration, with it being more lean and ergonomically pleasing. Along with the smaller build, the updated design shrank the logo, moved the black and white buttons to the bottom for easier access, and also brought back the rounded button style. The revised controller was well received by the gaming community and practically paved the way for future Xbox controllers going forward. Four years after the release of the original Xbox, Microsoft released the highly anticipated Xbox 360. The next-gen console did a 180 and ditched the dark colour scheme, going with a predominantly white and grey design. This controller had a more uniform body, with very little creases and lines to show where the pieces fit together. The new design also allowed players different options on how to power the controller, with a removable battery compartment in the back. This set the course for how Microsoft would approach battery life for its future designs, as well as promote an entirely cordless user experience, which was a big selling point for consoles at the time. Additional design changes also included the removal of the black and white buttons in favour of adding bumper buttons to the top left and right sides of the controller. This was also the first time Microsoft made use of the center logo, which not only showed you which player number you were, but also acted as a home button, allowing you to enter the console's hub to use different applications. For the following seven years, other iterations of this specific design didn't really make any major changes, other than adding a twistable 8-4 to four way D-pad and the color scheme. Okay, so it's not like the 4-way directional pad ever really went away, but after 11 years of using the 8-way D-pad, the Xbox One, for the first time, introduced the classic 4-way D-pad to its design. Other than that, the controller very much kept the overall button layout similar to that of its predecessor with some additional tweaks, including a redesign for the controller's grips, the elimination of the protruding battery pack, and more ergonomic bumper and trigger buttons. Later in 2015, Microsoft also adopted a more common audio feature, adding a 3.5mm audio jack, which finally allowed gamers to connect most of their preferred gaming headsets directly into the controller. Two years after the release of the original Xbox One controller, Microsoft shifted gears to cater to a more enthusiast-driven audience with the Xbox One Elite controller. Shaded in black and silver, the metal-infused Xbox One Elite was meant to be fully customizable, giving gamers an opportunity to personalize their controllers to better fit their particular playstyle. This included interchangeable paddles and analog sticks, as well as hair trigger locks, customizable sensitivity, and button mapping. While the Elite was a definite upgrade from the original Xbox One controller, it came at a high price. Literally. This device was bundled with the upgraded Xbox One S consoles and had very little difference to the original Xbox One controllers, with the exception of updated texture grips and Bluetooth capability, allowing users an alternative to the wireless adapter when pairing it to PC. During the same year as the release of the Xbox One Elite, Microsoft began working on a controller that would enable players with disabilities even greater access to the video games they already love to play. The controller consists of a slim rectangular frame with two large buttons that could be mapped to any function using the Xbox Accessories app. The new device also included a large D-pad along with the other buttons normally featured on a standard Xbox One controller. With USB ports along with 19 3.5mm jacks that corresponded to each button, trigger, bumper and D-pad function, the adaptive controller ultimately opened the door even further for multiple assistive input devices to be connected. Another noteworthy mention is that the adaptive controller isn't hardware locked to strictly Xbox, giving users the opportunity to use it across any gaming platform. 
After the success of the Elite controller, Microsoft doubled down on the Xbox One Elite and created the Elite Series 2. With its already stacked resume of customizable options, the Series 2 took things a step further with additional features like adjustable tension thumbsticks, shorter hair trigger locks, and Bluetooth connectivity, giving players even more freedom on how and where they could utilize the new controller. The Series 2 additionally added three custom profile buttons, which allows players to quickly change between playstyles to better suit the type of game they're currently playing. Which is your favorite Xbox controller and why? Don't forget for more on next gen, including the Xbox Series X, Keep your eyes peeled to GameSpot.